essentially sort of like an Instagram based community slash brand. Um, and the way that it started was I've always had this sort of vision for um, a community of photographers to sort of work together and create work separately, but um, at the same time be working on something together where you can like bounce ideas off each other or inspire each other to be creating something whether it's like you know one project together or just like different projects and like you know pushing one another to do more or create more and get out and kind of explore more well hey welcome to the photo report i'm here with david gunther and who's an amazing photographer pretty cool guy as well thanks man. and i'm um, just going to hear a little bit about your story and Basically, yeah, I want to hear how you got to where you are, and then we're going to talk a little bit about community and Instagram cool. and all that fun stuff. Cool. But um, what do you do and who are you? Yeah, my name is David Gunther. I'm primarily a wedding photographer from Alberta, Canada. Um, I have uh, four kids and a beautiful wife, so I spend a lot of time with my family, and that kind of uh, uh, is what my life is all about. So um, I plan everything around that, and I try to bring my family with me as much as I can when I'm working. Um, yeah, that's the gist of it. Amazing. And so how did you start getting into becoming a commercial photographer? Um, I think I always kind of wanted to be a commercial photographer. I think that was always sort of in the back of my mind. Um, but when I started shooting weddings and kind of became successful at that, that kind of was just um, like... I just sort of had a one-track mind on kind of getting better and kind of becoming successful in that. Um, and then when I started to kind of gain a little bit of success on social media um, and these sort of like opportunities started coming up where um, there were actual jobs, um, I started seeing the potential in um, working with brands and working with different companies. Um, and then I realized that I could kind of pursue that sort of stream or that avenue of photography. Um, and with... Uh, maybe the first couple small opportunities I realized that I could do that and sort of approach it in a similar way that I approach weddings but have sort of less stress and less pressure and kind of more creative control yeah, um, he gave a great talk yesterday um, and you were mentioning how you feel like wedding photographers are actually really primed well to be commercial photographers right can you talk a little bit about that yeah I think uh, I mean I think that commercial photography is all about telling stories and connecting with sort of the target market. Like if you're talking about, like, say, Nike, um, they want to connect with um, their their market and the people that they want to buy their products or, like, buy into their brand. Um, so they want to create stories that do that. And wedding photographers create stories every weekend. Um, and they're always, you know, meeting new people and connecting with those people and learning about who they are and then telling their story. Um, and they're doing it under really stressful, high pressure situations where they don't get a second chance to do it again. Um, so I think, um, being a wedding photographer prepared me immensely to get into commercial work. And, um, yeah, I believe that commercial photographers are, are perfect for contemporary commercial photography. Yeah, I'm. That's that's with weddings. I always tell people, it's like, listen, as a wedding photographer, if you're gonna be really good at it, you have to be an exceptional. You you basically take every type of photography and you have to do it all right. in one day in time constraints and different conditions. Right. You've got to be. If you travel, you've got it. You're basically a destination photographer. You're documenting the surroundings and that, or you are. Um, you know, you've got to be a product photographer. You've got to be a portrait photographer, right. family photographer, you know, all those different things. And so, you can hone those skills and be able to do it like on the fly in conditions that change with, you know, pressures that change. You know, totally. Like, yeah. And I think, um, another thing that's really important that you learn as a wedding photographer is, um, these sort of, um, things that really convey emotion, um, like people holding hands, like, and not even necessarily portraits, but things that are happening in the moment. So like, I love to focus on parents of the bride and the groom during the ceremony. Um, the way that they're like, you know, looking at um, their daughter or their son, and then they'll and then they'll turn and look at each other and like realize they're having a moment together, and they'll grab hands and, um, you know, console each other while they're crying or whatever. Um, and you kind of learn how to really capture those emotionally, and then the purpose of commercial photography um, when you're telling stories is to sort of create those moments 
for other people and so you've been doing that as a wedding photographer all along so you're kind of being honed to do that but when you're shooting um on a set for like a whole day or two days then you have time to just sort of like recreate that over and over again yeah yeah um can you go into a little bit of the story of getting approached by nike can you talk about that? yeah yeah it's for sure um so this was uh, about two years ago. Um, I hadn't, hadn't, as a professional photographer, I hadn't really shot anything but weddings. So my website and my blog were just weddings and engagement sessions and like a little bit of family work. Yeah. But it's pri- primarily like it was really obvious that I was a wedding photographer. And um, one day I just got a random um, email from someone at an agency um, asking me if I would be interested in working on a project for Nike. And they said that I have a really good eye for storytelling. Um, and I couldn't believe it at first. Um, but, um, you know, obviously I wanted to do it. So I went for it and, um, essentially I was hired to just create stories and capture them for Instagram. So I was shooting single images, but capturing sort of the just do it brand or the Nike brand, which is, um, the just do a brand is really all about storytelling like creating inspiring moments and experiences in a photo that um you know inspire people to be an athlete um yeah so it was um that was kind of my first big foray into commercial photography and uh i mean just getting that sort of inquiry too just gave me a ton of confidence um so when i was working on those those shoots and those projects, I would kind of doubt myself as someone who could create um, these moments that, you know, that Nike would want to show. But then it was just sort of like um, this incredible confidence that they actually wanted me to do it. So um, yeah, it was really cool. Do you do personal work outside of stuff you're getting hired for? Uh, I don't really. I mean, unless you consider shooting my kids personal work. Yeah. Um, and I need to do it more. But, um, you know, I like to spend as much time as I can with my kids right. and my wife. Two of my kids aren't in school yet. So when I'm not working during the day, um, I just like to hang out with them. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I do like to document our daily life. And I feel like that is kind of like an artistic project in a yeah. way because I want to do it in a way that kind of like <clears throat> honors their life and who they are growing up. And hopefully one day they can look back and feel like they have these photos that aren't just, you know, the typical snapshots of life, but right. are really telling a story and kind of kind of bring them back emotionally to that time in their life. In the, but I mean... I think you have done a really incredible job of blending that into the work where you're, you basically come up with ideas for trips right. and then you get, you know, can you maybe talk about how you've approached different companies totally. and then done that sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we love to travel, my wife and I, um, we, our goal in life is to just travel and bring our kids along and give them those experiences. So two years ago, um, I had a wedding in France and, um, we brought our whole family at the time. We had three kids and, um, I just, uh, it was, it was kind of like this dream that we'd always had to, um, bring them along. So it was really important to me to document it really beautifully. So I did that for like two weeks. We traveled around France and, um, I took these beautiful images of them, um, in different situations and I shot them in the way that I, um, like to shoot everything where it was like really storytelling, um, and tried to make it sort of like emotional and real. Um, so I had kind of built up this, um, I don't want to really call it a portfolio, but it was like a portfolio of like these, uh, family experiences that could also lend themselves to like commercial and brand work. Um, and so when we, uh, when we were planning sort of our next big trip, um, I thought it would be kind of the perfect opportunity to like sort of work something into it. So, um, I approached GM Canada and said, um, I want to do like a road trip to the Oregon coast. Um, I feel like I can create some beautiful sort of lifestyle imagery for you. And here's what I've done in the past. And I showed them, um, these photos for, that we, that I had from Europe. Um, and they like bought into it right away and it like kind of connected with them and they didn't have anything like that yet. And, um, I think that sort of imagery is really, um, uh, lends itself really well to social media. And I know that a lot of brands, like even big brands like Jim C are just sort of kind of getting into the social media world. And so they don't have a lot of those types of stories or that type of imagery to show. Um, so I knew that it would be something new for them and something that would be effective. And so they bought into it right away and I was able to incorporate 
um, that work into um, essentially like a family vacation mm -hmm. and sort of like get paid at the same time. How, because I, the, the whole social thing, I mean, Instagram is only what, five years old? Or, yeah, something I mean, like that. Not that much older than that. Um, and it's, you know, sort of like the Wild West where like in terms of figuring out what, how much is a social image worth? You know, like right. how, how have you navigated figuring out how to charge for? Social? Yeah, for, um, I've, just, I've just had to kind of ask a lot of questions of different people in the industry. And I mean, it's crazy because when you say industry, but like you said, it's so new and there isn't really like an industry for it. I read an article and I think it might've been Rangefinder like only a year and a half ago with um, Jared Chambers. And he was just talking about, um, and he's been really successful shooting social images and social campaigns and just talking about how there's really like, there's no measurement for it. It's just, it's like the wild west, like you said. Um, so it's been tough and I feel like everyone's kind of learning along the way, but um, like I, I've, talked with a few different agents to just sort of get advice um and then getty images is really has been helpful because they have sort of that image value calculator so i feel like they have a beat on the industry so i use that sometimes but for the most part like i'll get a read from um a brand on kind of what their budget is for a project and sort of go off of that but the general starting point for like a social image is like five hundred dollars, okay. and then you kind of go up and down from there depending on who you're working with and kind of what their budget is. Yeah, I would I would love to hear being a dad myself. Yeah, and uh, I've got three kids. Yeah. How how have you managed and navigated running a business, trying to shoot, but then also um, spending time and being present with your family and all that? Yeah, um, I'm always questioning whether or not I'm doing a good job, like, daily. Um, but, I, so I work from home, my office is at home, which is, which is really great um, on one hand because I can get up in the morning, um, hang out with my kids while they're getting ready for school or whatever, and we have breakfast, and I make coffee and all of that, um, and we have that family time. And then when, they, when my two older girls go to school, then I start working. Um, and, so, and then when they get home, then... Um, you know, I'm there and I'm available to them. Um, especially, you know, when I'm not in the heat of wedding season. Um, at the same time, it's really challenging because my two younger kids who are um, almost four and then one, they don't really get the difference. Like they know that I'm working, right. but they don't really know what that means. Like I'm sitting at my desk, which is kind of in the living room. Um, <clears throat> so I'm at home. And to Clementine, my three-year-old, almost four-year-old, like, I'm just at home and I should be hanging out. And she wants to show me the tower that she just built. And uh, I should be, like, available right now to just yeah. go over and look at it. But I'm in the middle of, like, writing an email or processing some images. And I don't want to pull myself away from it because it's not, like, five minutes. It turns into half an hour. Um, so the day-to-day -day can definitely be challenging. Um but overall, um, I really try to pick and choose my work so that it sort of lends itself well to spending time with my family. So when I'm booking weddings in the summer, um, like I'm shooting almost every weekend, but I'll look at my schedule and see where I'm shooting and we'll like, you know, plan a vacation around that. So like um, this summer coming up, um, I have a crazy few weeks where I have like sort of weddings in three different areas of Canada, but one of them is on the coast in BC. So we're going to just drive out there as a family and just kind of make a road trip out of it. Um, because it's something we would want to do as a family anyway. And, um, you know, I'm working at the same time. So we just kind of put it together. Um, and then my wife is just super, super supportive of, supportive of me and my career. Um, she's sort of my biggest ally. And so she, she gets it that I'm, that I'm busy sort of, um, all the time. Like I don't have set hours. It's really hard to be, um, a wedding photographer and have set hours all the time. So she understands it and she kind of like almost tailors her life and our kids lives to that and, um, sort of makes it, makes our lives sort of more flexible so that I can be, busy at certain times so that I'm open at other times. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I'm really lucky to have someone who is totally understanding of that. Um, and just kind of like, um, is totally in it with me and she just knows how it works and she knows when to give me time to work or when to just kind of like, um, 
it's kind of gotten to the point where she doesn't need to ask if I'm super busy, like if I can come and do this or like help on this day. She just sort of knows and like plans, um, okay, well, we're going to get our parents to help this day and I'm going to go do this because I know you're going to be really busy. And there's never like, um, there's never tension in that way, um, which like I'm thinking about it right now kind of for the first time, but um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it just works so well. So um, day to day it can be challenging, but overall I just feel like it works really well. And <clears throat> as parents, like we're kind of okay with like pulling our kids out of school anytime. So if I have a job, like if I have a wedding in October, that's, you know, six hours out of town, we're kind of okay with our kids missing a couple of days of school so that we can do it together. It doesn't always work that way, but, um, we're, we're sort of like flexible as parents that way. So, um, essentially we just try to make it all work together. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. The, can we talk, um, uh, shift it over to community and yeah. great North collective. Um, can you talk about what Great North Collective is for anyone who might not know, which I'm sure you probably know. <laughs> um, yeah, so Great North Collective is um, essentially sort of like an Instagram-based community slash brand. Um, and the way that it started was I've always had this sort of vision for um, a community of photographers to sort of work together and create work separately, but um, at the same time be working on something together where you can like bounce ideas off each other or inspire each other to be creating something whether it's like you know one project together or just like different projects and like you know pushing one another to do more or create more and get out and kind of explore more um and that sort of happened through instagram so i found a couple of friends who were kind of in the same place as i was in that way they sort of had a vision for the same thing and so um we used Instagram as kind of an avenue to do that. And essentially we came up with the name Great North Collective and the goal was to sort of um, focus on Canadians and the sort of landscape of Canada because I, to me that was like really untouched in terms of um, Instagram and social media. You know, there are these amazing communities in like San Francisco and New York and different places in Europe where all these people were showing these amazing images and they all like sort of became friends and like inspired each other to, to, to push and create better images. But there wasn't really anything like that in Canada. So we wanted to create that. So, um, we came up with the name Great North Collective and we just started hashtagging images and sort of drawing attention to it. Um, and then we created an Instagram account and just encouraged people to go out and do the same thing. And then our goal was to feature other people as much as we wanted to kind of feature our own work and, and kind of like gain exposure for ourselves as photographers. Um, we wanted to find other people to like inspire and go out and do that and then also tell their stories. So we would post um, images and then people who we saw who had cool stories we featured them on our website and um, it just kind of exploded into this huge community and was growing like tens of thousands you know every couple of weeks and it's gotten to the point now where we have like almost i think we might have 400,000 followers now um and we've kind of pushed it beyond just canada into international and through that like through the influence that we've kind of developed through having that sort of following and community we've been able to work with other brands to tell their stories and then obviously turn that into like, um, pay jobs, which has been really cool. Yeah. How do you, as great North collective and you guys are partners, just a few of you, how do you take on the jobs together or are you, has that almost become like agency type deal where then you're handing off jobs to people? Um, no, it hasn't gotten to that point yet. And that's been really tough for us because I think it, there's a few different ways that it can go, especially in like that world. But so far we've kind of, for the most part, worked on everything together. Um, there's been a couple things now where one or two of us have gone and done jobs on our own. Um, but we try to do it together and we've over the years created that dynamic of, um, the three of us and we've all at the same time been developing our own social following. So we all have something unique to offer. Um, so we just did a campaign for Mercedes Benz and the three of us went out and shot it and we all kind of had, um, like a joint vision for what we wanted to create. Um, and then we approached it as just three separate photographers. So we came up with a storyboard ahead of time and said, okay, this is how I'm going to shoot it. This is what you're going to shoot. And this is what you're going to shoot. And in a way we're still trying to figure out how that's going to work um but when uh different brands and especially like um 
tourism boards um, bring us on. They want all three of us and they want our personal followings along with the Great North Collective following. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of, um, it just sort of, it's been going with the flow for the most part. I'm just kind of learning as we go and just figuring out kind of what works best. Within, now that you sort of have Great North Collective and, um, I mean, you've got a, you've got a decent following on Instagram. How, how do you approach your work and how do you really, how's Instagram, I guess, changed the way that you approach work? Yeah, that's an interesting question. And when, um, like when Great North Collective really exploded, it was during, it was during the winter. So I was in my off season, like in Canada, I only really shoot weddings from like June to October. Um, so for like five months I was going out and just, I was shooting for the first time really, since I'd really um, gotten into wedding photography, I was shooting other stuff and a lot of it was landscapes. And then when I got back into weddings, I was, um, I felt kind of rusty in that, in that I had, I realized I was approaching things totally differently. And I, um, was totally out of the flow of like working with couples and like working really intimately with people. Um, so it took a little while to get back into that flow, but I also, um, realized that I kind of added like, um, like more to my creative arsenal and um like as a wedding photographer you know you're really focused on telling the story of people like for them um especially when you're shooting weddings because you know that the couple are going to be the people that see that later and they're going to show it to their family and friends but you're really shooting it for them to see for the next 60 70 years right and they're your audience um but when I was shooting this other stuff, it was like everyone else was my audience and I was kind of shooting it for myself, but I was shooting it for other people to see. And so I kind of realized that I was learning how to tell a story for others to see as well. And I learned to sort of work more into it, whether it was like landscapes or, um, just kind of like work, like focusing more on the other people that were at a wedding or like, you know, shooting wider at a reception or things like that. So it definitely sort of affected my approach and kind of, I think it made me a better photographer for sure. And I think, um, since then my, as that sort of developed, um, it's kind of, um, added to who I am as a photographer. And I think people want to see that more. And when, people most people that hire me see my instagram work and what i have on instagram like i don't put a lot of weddings on there so it's a lot different but people still um they they still see that as a part of who i am as a photographer and so they want that too they want like those scenes and those landscapes and they want me to shoot in that way as well which is cool i mean it it has a little bit more work and like more responsibility on a day but um yeah, it's it's been really interesting to see how that's helped develop me as a photographer for sure. Yeah. Oh, have have you just looking back on sort of your career as a photographer, have there either been some like monumental things that have maybe gotten you where you are? Yeah, I guess that's Um, that's a good question too. Um I don't know. Um or then the- I mean, I think I think what really kind of um was big for me and kind of took me from shooting like, you know, five weddings in my first year to suddenly shooting like 20 weddings. Um, I focused a lot on landscapes and light in a way that a lot of people in my area weren't. And it wasn't even mountains at the time. It was like prairies. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I looked up to a lot of people in the industry at that time who were really using, like finding new ways to use light. Um, and, uh, I think where I'm from, I was kind of the first person that would do that. And so people hadn't really seen that before. Um, and so it drew a lot of attention and it was also at the sort of kind of the beginning of like Facebook and things like that. So I could show those images and people would be like, wow, you can shoot weddings this way. Um, so that helped a lot too. I think specific examples, um, it's hard to like to pinpoint what, what might've been. Yeah. 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 No, are, are there any things like big lessons learned that um, have been helpful? You know, obviously, look, mistakes we make end up uh, we end up learning and growing from those. Yeah. Um, or things that if you could go back and tell uh, your younger self, I think it would be or... to just um, take it a bit more easy and kind of live in the moment. Um, 
I used to just kind of line up like every shot that I wanted to take before a wedding and have it all stored in my head and kind of follow the script. Um, and it caused me to be really stressed and anxious um, and really kind of stiff in the way that I approached everything. And then I learned that um, as long as I'm like solid in my craft, I can turn any situation into good photos, whether I'm shooting portraits or whether I'm shooting getting ready. As long as I'm just confident and know that um, I can make good images, um, good images are gonna happen. Um, and that kind of took a lot of um, like anxiety off off my shoulders um, and a lot of stress off my shoulders when I'm just approaching a wedding day. Um, and it allows me be, to be more relaxed and um, just makes for better work because I'm not thinking so much ahead of time. I'm just really in the moment and seeing things more clearly. And I, I think I definitely wish I could go back to the first couple of years that I was shooting weddings and approach things that way. Um, I'm still proud of like, you know, the images and the work that I created back then, but I feel like it could have been even better if, uh, if I just would have allowed myself to have more creative freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, if yeah. people want to look up your stuff, where do they find your work? Um, yeah. So I love people to look at my website cause that's my, you know, my curated portfolio, um, which is just David Gunther photography.com. Um, Instagram obviously is big for me and that's just David Gunther. Um, those are the two main ones. I'm on Tumblr. I don't really do much on there. I wish I did more. That's I am David Gunther. Um, and then, uh, Twitter. No, don't check me out on Twitter. I never tweet, <laughs> but that's about it. Yeah. 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 Well, right, man. Thanks so much for the, yeah. Thanks for having and, me Brady. and all the just, um, experience that you've shared. So cool. It was an honor to be here. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hope you love that video. If you want to see more videos like this, click the link below, which will just take you and keep you notified and updated. Um, you can go to the photoreport.com to see more videos related around photography, or then there's the artistreport.com, which is a subsite of that. And basically inter interview and dissect just how people do what they do from artists to illustrators, designers, and hopefully it's something that you learn from or relate to and just get something out of. But we'd love it if you could either subscribe to the YouTube page right here and just get notified there, or below we'll take you straight to the site and sign up there. So thanks so much. See you soon.